Hello and welcome viewers to another episode in the Mind Grid. And today we're talking about reset design in digital logic. Things like FPGAs and ASICs might benefit from these approaches. So let's dive into the subject matter. All right, so we'll begin with timed resets. Um, timed resets are required when we have to make sure that there is setup time and hold time met. And typically you want to time everything, um, but it is harder to do um, timing with resets because these are very high fan out nets. And so achieving timing across um, a very vast area of the chip um, with large fan outs, uh, meeting setup times could be a challenge and uh, typically it has been a challenge. Um, so this is the problem with time resets, and especially as the clock frequencies go higher and higher, um, as you go more than 500 megahertz these days, to uh, maybe people are trying to close timing at gigahertz. Um, and at those speeds and beyond those speeds, you will see that reset needs a different approach maybe. Um, so let's talk about other things. So regarding other kinds of resets, um, when time resets don't work, you may be able to use async resets and untimed resets. And in the case of untimed resets, the problem that happens is that um, the reset release uh, may happen close to a clock. And so different flops in the system will receive different timings. And these different timings are uh, with respect to the clock edges and some flops will see one of these timings, which I show here in shaded. So the different kinds of timings are achieved. And because of that, different flops come out. And sometimes the flops, because the reset's too close to the edge, may even go metastable. So the two problems here, in summary, are that either the resets are coming in and out of, uh, sorry, out of reset in at different times, or they're going metastable. Now, 99.99% of the cases, this is not a problem, but that 0.01% of the cases will give you a headache uh, to resolve. So you have to be aware that this could be happening in your system. Thirdly, if you look at pipelines, reset at pipelines is um, less of a problem because even though the flops may come out at the different times, but eventually they'll get reset and the pipelines will continue to flow. So pipelines, not as big of a problem. And um, so yeah, that's uh, incorrect data is flushed out eventually, and so we are good. Then state machines, now state machines, like in this case, this is a one hot state machine. And very simple, one hot state machine, and the one propagates throughout the system and eventually comes back. And so it always stays where one bit is one and everything else is a zero, right? Very simple. But now consider the case where F0 may stay in reset one clock cycle longer. And if that happens, the F0 stays longer till a later clock and F1 comes out and it clocks in the one coming from the F0. And so um, it can go into a one state as well while F0 is also in one state. So you've ended up in a non one heart encoded state, which is not your intention, but just because resets are coming out async and untimed and they're distributed accordingly in the chip um, coming out at different times is not so good for your, for your circuits. So finally, we look at a solution and one of the common solutions. There are many solutions, but this is the, this is a common solution. And in this solution, what happens is that um, you bring in your async reset into a chain. Now I've shown uh, some number of flops here, four flops, but you could have any number of uh, flops to extend the length of the chain where async reset goes and you're putting in some amount of delay before the reset is deasserted. But um, four is a reasonable number. Um, and in this case, um, what you can do is that you feed the first flop with um, a, a ground or zero. And then once the reset is deasserted, then it takes the, those many clocks for, let's say in this case, F3 to um, deassert the reset 
<clears throat> and that that also aligns the reset to uh, the clock edge and um, and if there is any uh, metastability that's also cleared by these flops so the flops serve multiple purposes they get rid of the metastability and um, at the same time um, they will also um, give you some extra clock cycles before the resets deasserted um, and stretch the length of the reset so um, now what happens here is that let's say the reset async reset is deasserted at some point and then you can see that a clock cycle later f0 deasserts one clock cycle later f1 f2 and f3 and now you have a synchronized reset now the thing to keep in mind here is that this is a low fan out circuit and this is supposed to be placed in sections of the chip you cannot use this approach and then say i have a synchronized reset and feed this to a high fan out because like we said in the first slide that if you do that then you have a case where you won't meet timing and it's generally speaking very difficult to achieve on a high high fan out um circuit so um that is what you do you distribute you put multiples of these you divide your chip into sections and you put these um, localized resets which are synchronized versions of the async resets and you can completely time these resets and um, they will give you uh, a good solution now you can distribute async resets throughout the chip so the good news is you know you can stay async or untimed all the way across the chip and then synchronize in local pockets where you need synchronization and where you need to uh, retain consistency of when the flops come out of like state machines, et cetera, as we discussed coming out of out of reset. So this is kind of a async sync com combination or hybrid approach that will solve your problems. So um, that's it for um, this video. Um, if you guys liked it or have any comments, please leave them below and if you, would like to subscribe to my channel i'll keep bringing these kind of contents in the future and thank you for watching i'll see you in another video bye bye